from Oceana Cruises, who, if I remember this correctly, James, weren't you one of the original team members at Oceana when the brand established itself 15 years ago? I was, and I am. I've been uh, with Oceana now for almost 17 years, going on 18. We uh, started the company in 2003, and there were 19 of us who kind of um, got together and um, decided we were going to build a brand new cruise line. So, well, it's it's uh, you guys as as viewers should consider it an honor to have somebody that was on the original team. So, uh, I'm sure you'll talk about this, but James was in that team that literally created the brand that Oceana Cruises has lived by from the beginning, and he's been instrumental in all of the moves and the growth with the new ships. Uh, he and I have been together for multiple uh, christenings of ships. Uh, most recently, we were together in Barcelona for the Serena, uh, and we look forward to new ships as they launch in the next couple of years. Hopefully, uh, we'll be on that track. But without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you, James. Thanks for joining sure. us today, and it's all yours. Excellent. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, it certainly is interesting times uh, today, and uh, I think something that you touched on now, uh, about being part of a startup company. I think what was in our DNA then, which is innovation and entrepreneurship, are probably the key elements that are going to make sure that Oceana Cruises emerges from uh, this particular crisis um, successfully. And so I think we're relying on that right now um, as a company, um, our entrepreneurship, our innovation to uh, spend this time right now be, becoming a better product uh, for, for everyone out there. Um, I was a founding team member back in 2003, and at that time, uh, if you're not familiar or remember, there were three segments in the market. There was the mass market, then you had the premium players, and then you had the luxury players. And what our goal was to come was to come in right below the luxury players in price uh, and offer most of what luxury had to offer, but at a premium price. And our target market back then, and is to this day, our, our baby boomers, uh, 55 plus, which I'm now getting to there. I'm almost there, but I will be a baby. Uh, I will be uh, 55 plus in a few years. Um, but that's what we did. We decided that we wanted to change what the cruise experience was all about because baby boomers had changed everything um, in, in our culture up until that point. So we came out with a cruise product that offered no formal nights because nobody wanted to actually dress up and wear a tuxedo or take a tuxedo on their vacation any longer. We wanted all open seating so that you could dine with who you want to, when you want to. Um, and um, also we wanted to make sure that there were no surcharges for um, that, uh, that experience as well. So innovation is probably one of the key things that we are uh, focused on, especially right now at this particular time. This is just a sneak peek of our branding ad that's coming out that is called Remember the Future. Um, it uh, speaks to the moment and also asks our guests to keep dreaming about the future and why they love and why they're passionate about the cruise experience. When we founded Oceana Cruise, there were three specific elements that we focused on. One, number one, was to be destination specialists, to come out with the best itineraries and destinations out there. We also wanted to focus on the onboard experience, how our baby boomers, how the 55 plus, how experienced travelers really wanted to experience the world. Uh, and then thirdly, and what this presentation is all about and the meat of this presentation is the finest cuisine at sea, which I will go into. But for those of you who are not familiar with Oceana Cruises, I wanted to just touch on something that makes Oceana Cruises so special. Um, and number one, it is the destinations that we go to and what we built. Uh, being destination specialists is at the core of our business. And uh, we pride ourselves on building enriching immersive itineraries, anything from seven days all the way to 180 days. We were the first cruise line to come out with a full circumnavigation world cruise at 180 days. Um, it's a trip from Miami all the way back to Miami or Miami to Los Angeles, but it fully circumnavigates the world. So we're innovation, innovating in that respect of building that specific itinerary. We also created max boutique ports with mar marquee ports um, uh, so that there is something on an itinerary for everyone. And because of the size of our ship, we're able to get in some of these smaller ports with other cruise ships are not able to get into, especially those ports like Monte Carlos where our guests do not have to tender in. Our itineraries were built for uh, destination immersion. We have extended stays in many of our ports and allow, it allows for our guests to really go in deep into these 
uh, destination. Our overnights um, on most of our itineraries allow guests to dine in, in port. Uh, we have overnights on embarkation ports and, and disembarkation ports, and that's important also because if you've been on you've been on a cruise before, which I'm sure most of you have, uh, you're usually trying to rush the day you get there, and you don't really get to see the destination where you're embarking, or whenever you're disembarking, you may be going directly to the airport. So we wanted to allow our guests to have some time either before the cruise or after the cruise to really immerse themselves in those destinations. Along with that is our shore excursions and our focus on culture and history, adventure, and especially the cuisine. Um, the Oceana guests, you know, they're experienced travelers. They uh, don't really want to go on a city bus tour. They don't want to sit on a bus tour and go around. Many of them have been to the Rums before, to the Barcelonas before. So they're asking for and looking for more immersive experiences, which we have created um, with our culinary discovery tours, where we're able to go out and um, actually go into the home of, uh, of some of, um, let's say in Terramina, you're able to go in and learn how to make fresh pasta from a, a local. Uh, we also have our Aquamar health and wellness tours, uh, where guests have the opportunity to take a meditation or a yoga class overlooking the, the Bay of Terramina. Or uh, they can learn Tai Chi uh, at the Pharaoh Imperial Palace in uh, Marseille. These are just a few of the uh, types of uh, experiences that allow you to immerse yourselves in those destinations. And our reach, for those of you who are not familiar with Oceana Cruises, uh, is truly go global. We're, we go just about everywhere in the world. Uh, in the summer, we're usually in the Med, in Northern Europe, and Alaska. Um, and in the winter, we're in the Caribbean, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, South America, uh, South Pacific. Uh, if you ask me today what our top markets are, we've had some really good booking days over the last couple of weeks. Um, and uh, I, that's, of course, relative to what they were before, but they really are have, have picked up pace. Uh, but the top markets that are booking right now are the MED, that's our number one destination, uh, followed by Northern Europe, then you have the Caribbean, and then you also have Alaska as a top destination choice. Um, so if uh, you have a dream destination in mind, uh, chances are that Oceana can actually take you there uh, sometime soon. And uh, what we can do, and we can do so on board some of our small luxurious ships. Um, so we focus on destinations and itinerary planning, but our second area of focus that, we're, um, that we, we uh, really innovate in is how we actually get you there. Um, how we innovate in the areas of accommodations, um, how we innovate in ambiance, and also in service. Um, we have four 684 passenger ships, and we have two 1,250 passenger ships. Our guest-to-staff guest ratio is really one-to-one, -one, but if you want to be technical, it's one to 1 to 1.5. So um, our guests really immerse themselves not only in the destinations, but the onboard experience, and also our crew and staff become uh, just like your, your family. Um, they get to know your name, so it's very, a very intimate experience on board the ships. Uh, we have a country club casual ambiance, as I mentioned before, where um, there's no formality on board. Um, it's really a cruise ship built and a cruise experience built for those who like uh, to experience the world and are experienced at experiencing the world as well. Our ships are residentially designed. Uh, if you're on board our ships, you can take a look at just the furnishings around you. Um, each room, public room, the furnishings were specifically chosen for that particular um, um, area. Uh, there's no mass buy of, of furniture and just thrown around the ship. We actually take great care in making sure the, sh the ship feels like it's your home away from home. Our owner suites are actually, uh, actually designed by Ralph Lauren Home, and they're also um, furnished by Ralph Lauren Home. And we also have our tranquility bed. For those of you who've been on board of Oceana Cruises, you know uh, the benefits of our tranquility bed. But more importantly, we want uh, we wanted to be known for something. Besides destination specialists, um, um, small ship luxury, we really wanted to be known for a specific item, and that is what we're going to be presenting today, which is the finest cuisine at sea. Um, our CEO always likes to say that uh, at the very beginning, he says, you know, we want to be known for something. Volvo is known for safety. At Oceana Cruises, we want to be known for our cuisine. So that's really where our number one focus is and is the hallmark of our brand. Our hotel operations um, uh, director often tells uh, people in, in, in presentations that um, 
uh, when guests come back from the ship and they call their travel advisor, what is the first thing they're going to tell their travel advisor? It's not going to be what the bar stools look like in the bar. It's not going to be the color of the sheets. It's going to be whether they ate well or not. So that's one thing that we really have to get right. Um, so we do this by investing more than any other cruise line per person per day on the cuisine that we um, offer our guests on board the ship. So um, if you ask anyone out there and you'll see the awards, if you go to our website, if you go to any of the blogs or cruise critic spaces, you're going to see chatter about our cuisine because it is truly just um, that, that good. Um, something else that we, uh, that extends beyond just the culinary experience um, is our activities on board the ship. And I say this because we were the first to have a culinary center at sea. This is a hands-on culinary school where you cook and chop side by side. There are other cruise lines out there that have theaters where you sit and you kind of watch the chef actually cook. Uh, but at Oceana Cruises, we actually have a culinary school where you actually are hands-on cooking side by side with chefs. Along with that, you, we also have our culinary discovery tours, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. And these culinary tours are really great because you're able to really go into, let's say Barcelona, for example. You take a culinary class on board the ship that talks about how to make the best paella. Well, our chefs are gonna take you ashore. They're gonna take you into the markets. They're gonna teach you how to select the, the best meats, the best spices, uh, the best fruits and vegetables, what to look for when you're in these areas. And then you're going to buy those and bring them back to the ship. And our chefs are going to show you how to make the best paella you've ever made in your life. Um, and then we have uh, these types of programs throughout the Mediterranean. We have them in the Caribbean. We have them in Australia and other parts of the world as well. Uh, but to consistently deliver the exceptional culinary experience uh, from beginning to the end of your cruise, um, there were certain elements that we really wanted to focus on. And there are three elements that we focus on to make sure that we do have the finest cuisine at sea. And I'm going to focus on number one, which is the galley space. The, the, um, galleys, the uh, area that really um, make, give our chefs the tools to do what they need to do. I like to say that great artists need the right tools. Well, our chefs also need the best facilities uh, to create the magic that they actually do. It was an uh, interesting experience when we were building our first purpose-built ship, uh, Marina, uh, back in 2010. The shipyard would tell our CEO after they're going over the plans and, 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 uh, and trying to build the best ship ever, um, they said, you guys aren't building a, a, a cruise ship, you're building a floating galley because we were dedicating so much space to um, our restaurants um, that uh, they, they found it rather, rather amusing. Um, so each of our restaurants has its own kitchen or galley. And why do we do this? We do this because we want to make sure that the, the cuisine and the food that's presented always made a la minute. Nothing is ever carried from deck five up to deck 10. Um, it's all made there in the specific area or kitchen or galley um, that, that, um, that is needed. Um, so whether you're in Tuscan steak and you're having, let's say, Kobe meatballs, or you're in Red Ginger having our famous miso glazed sea bass, or in Jacques uh, dining on our uh, French escargot dripping in like burgundy garlic, you can tell it's almost dinner time here in Florida because I'm very hungry. Uh, but you can rest assured that your meal is going to be made a la mood um, in our, our restaurants. Uh, there's another story for those of you who are um, uh, have gluten allergies. Uh, there was a great story from one of our guests who had been on other cruise ships before, and uh, they're used to uh, the, the waiter bringing um, a special menu to them and saying, you know, what, uh, what they can order, what they can't order. Um, and when someone asked our waiter, um, I have a gluten allergy, can you bring me the gluten menu? He said, no, madam, um, tell us what you would like to eat and we will prepare it for you um, the way you would like. And so that guest was very taken back on just the attention um, that our, our chefs um, gave and how they, the ability for them to actually make something a la menu. We're a cruise line that was built by foodies. Um, it's true that cruise lines visit some of the same similar ports although they don't mix the marquee ports and boutique ports as well as we do. But for the most part, all cruise ships go to Rome. But what they don't do is invest in the ingredients, invest in the culinary experience like we do. Um, we have premium French flour. Uh, it's called Plancho flour that we've had custom milled just for Oceana Cruises. 
Uh, we do this because I'm not a baker and I've learned over through now being um, quarantined that I'm not a good baker, I'm not a good cook, I'm not, I don't know how to make eggs all that well. Uh, that's what my family tells me. Uh, but I do know that on board our ships, that the consistency and humidity on board the ships really plays a factor into the breads that are made, the pastries that are made on board the ship. So our chefs and our culinary team took special uh, attention to, to custom mill flour that was uh, humidity resistant, so that you have the same croissant when you're in the Mediterranean, whether you're in the Ch South China Sea, that the consistency is the same. Our Verona chocolate, we only pick the best chocolates uh, throughout the world. Our homemade pastas on board our ships, the sauces and the fresh herbs, uh, the vegetables that we source locally and some of the places we go to. We also uh, source some of the, the uh, best fresh sustainable fish in countless ports across uh, the world from again South China Sea to whether we're cruising the Mediterranean Italian Sea, uh, Italian Riviera. Um, you will know that the fresh catch of day is truly the fresh catch of the day. So um, we must have the freshest ingredients because uh, in just a few moments, you're going to hear from a special guest of ours, talk a little bit about plant-based food, our plant-based food program, um, which um, these fresh ingredients are essential to that. Uh, our culinary uh, team, that, uh, that is our third pillar. Um, and just the amount of attention that we give to our culinary team on board the ship. Usually when I'm talking to audiences, I usually like to some uh, audience interaction and I asked them if they could guess how many crew and staff are dedicated to the culinary experience on board our ships. If we have 1,250 guests, let's say, on our ship, how many of them are dedicated to the onboard, onboard culinary experience? At Oceana Cruise, it's roughly half. So out of 1,250, there's about 800 um, uh, on our ships that are crew and members that are dedicated to um, the culinary experience. Um, on our ships that are our 684 passengers, nearly half of them, the entire onboard staff is dedicated to the culinary experience. Uh, for every three guests, there is one person dedicated to the dining experience. Uh, we also have uh, Master Chef uh, Jacques Pepin as our executive culinary director. He's been with us since the beginning. Many of, them, many of you may know him from his uh, PBS specials or his cooking shows with uh, Julia Childs. Uh, he's been the personal chef, chef for three French heads of state, uh, including Charles de Gaulle. Um, he's also served as host on, again, uh, many of the acclaimed cooking programs on, on PD, PBS. Um, our chefs are continually innovating when it comes to the culinary programs on board. Um, in our La Reserve restaurant, for instance, we have the world's first Don Perignon tasting dinner. It's six courses paired with six vintages of uh, champagne. It's the only place in the world that you can actually get this. And um, uh, for those of you, I, uh, I actually did, did this, uh, this um, six course meal. It was actually one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. I never knew that you could pair champagne uh, with the meals, but uh, it was very interesting to see the flavors uh, from the champagne change uh, what you are eating and the dishes that were actually served. So I encourage those of you who are going to sail with Oceana Cruises to, that's a definitely, you must do on board our ship is the Dom Perignon tasting dinner. We also have our Aquamar Spa Cuisine that are continually innovating. Our chef market tours that are hosted in the Terrace Cafe. So for example, if we're in Greece, our chefs will go ashore, they'll source some of the local farm uh, vegetables and, and ingredients, they'll bring them to the ship and that evening in the Terrace Cafe, there'll be a Greek uh, fest on board the ship where it's kind of a uh, farm to table um, type experience on board the ships, um, as well as innovating in the uh, plant-based food options. Um, which brings me to um, our special guest today, uh, who is Frank Garanger. Uh, I'm going to introduce Frank Frank now and Ryan is going to ask him a few questions and um, we're going to uh, get some ins and outs of the uh, plant-based foods. But just to introduce Frank a bit here, um, he oversees all of our culinary uh, operations on board. Uh, he's experienced stems from his tenure in the, in, at the Five Star Palace Hotel on the French R Riviera um, and at the Hotel de Paris in Monaco, just to name a few places. 
He has done extensive work with such culinary greats as uh, Paul Bucus, uh, Alian Passard, Terry Marks, and you're gonna kill me for actually pronouncing these names, Franck, I know, because I'm not French, I can't pronounce them like you do. Uh, but he's also been recognized by world leaders such as Nelson Mandela or the King of Jordan, um, from whom he's created private dinners. His mastery was recognized at an early age when he was nominated as one of the best 10 young chefs of his generation. And Franck has been with Oceana since day one, and he's been really instrumental in helping us create the culture that is, a, is passionate for serving the finest cuisine at sea. And his ability in creating innovative menus stems from his mastery of cooking techniques and unequivocal knowledge of blending flavors from all around the world. So I hope I gave you kind of an overview of the Oceana Cruises experience. I really wanted to give you in a short amount of time that we have uh, what the Oceana Cruises experience is all about from being destination specialists and creating those really uh, interesting itineraries all the way up to our 180 day world cruise um, to the onboard experience and how we pay particular attention to the experienced traveler on board the ship and we want to create programs uh, just for them all the way to providing you with the finest uh, cuisine at sea. Now we're going to hear from um, um, our team and I'm going to turn it over to Ryan uh, so you can interview Frank and I'm going to hand it back over right now. Thank you uh, James, great job and uh, we sure. are really excited to have Frank join us. Uh, Franck is uh, literally seated in his home in the Loire Valley in France right now, and it is a shade after midnight. <laughs> Thank you, Franck, for joining us. Uh, it's the afternoon for us here uh, in Tucson is where I'm located, so it's a little after three. James is in South Florida, so you get the award uh, for the most difficult uh, interview time here being at after midnight, but as I as we started to understand a little bit more about the plant-based menu and how you've developed that, I, I couldn't stop and, and really understand it any better than your ability to promote on Facebook and on YouTube, uh, the whole concept behind the plant-based food options. And you've coined a pretty cool name called the Green Punk Food. Could you kind of give a little more explanation of how that came about? Uh, first of all, uh, good evening, uh, everyone, because it's uh, well, very late uh, in the Loire Valley. Um, yeah, the, the, the green punk food, actually, my goal was to really uh, open the door um, of plant-based uh, cuisine, which is to, uh, to, to, to be able to explain with a, a very simple recipe uh, how to uh, cook and how to enjoy a very nice meal uh, using only uh, vegetable or fruits. Um, so this is this was a very uh, very good uh, challenge, and uh, I start to do that because I'm an ultra marathon runner, and uh, I start to realize uh, a few years ago, let's say 15 years ago, that uh, uh, focusing on uh, really eating only uh, fruits and vegetable. Uh, will really increase my uh, my capability uh, of running. So um, I start to make some video. I started to do it on the ship first to to uh, to to prepare some of the plant based food, and uh, and for me my goal was to really really open the doors for uh, regular people to say, listen, if you follow those uh, video, you will learn. Uh, very simple and easy recipe and you will see that we really can uh, enjoy beautiful food uh, uh, using only vegetable. So the green punk food came uh, because I was with my friend uh, Christoph Berg, which is a chef instructor and has a plant-based school uh, in Thailand, is French, and uh, we start to to meet together on the on the, um, on social media. Then we actually uh, physically uh, met and uh, we start to, to talk about uh, plant-based food and he told me that uh, uh, I was a, a real chef and he, he was actually a punk uh, when it comes to, uh, to food. Uh, and he had some beautiful creativity, but he didn't have that much techniques. So um, he came with this, uh, you know, the, 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 the punk music uh, merged in uh, mid, mid 70s and it was a kind of music that uh, didn't have rules. And plant-based food doesn't have rules yet. 
there is no uh, Larousse gastronomic uh, with uh, the, the procedure and the recipe. It's really people like uh, Christophe, like me, and many other people in the world that start to, to create recipes. So we find recipe on the, on the website, how to make all our, uh, um, let's say, plant-based milk, uh, all the different type of milk we can make. We can all, all also make some cheese. So um, yeah, there, there, there is no rules. So we, we have to, to start to, to do it ourselves and uh, actually uh, uh, collect a lot of recipe. I do a lot of testing. I share with some chefs and uh, that's, uh, that's, let's say, how it starts now. Awesome. The plant-based food uh, on land has been picking up steam and Oceana Cruises and you have really innovated it by bringing it onto a ship. So can it give us an idea of what you see the future of plant-based food in the cruise industry specifically? I really think it will, it will grow. Uh, that's for sure. Um, because after, I tell you, after five days on the ocean airship, we have uh, many guests and uh, very often women that uh, have enough with lobster, have enough with uh, all the, the, this rich food and sometimes just want to stick to a plant based. Uh, so they try one night, they say, Man, this, this is fantastic. This is great. It's full of flavor, is uh, cooked a la minute. And I'm having a fantastic uh, uh, dinner, fantastic meal. And uh, sometimes we, you don't even realize that uh, you had a plant based meal. Um, so it, it, it definitely will grow. Um, and I remember um, three, four years ago in Miami, you hardly find a plant-based mm -hmm. uh, restaurant. Now there is one every corner of the street. It's unbelievable how it went in the last uh, three years. So yeah, it will grow and uh, we have to be prepared. And I'm very happy that uh, Oceania gave me the opportunity to, uh, to start already uh, two years ago because we have a, we, we started with just with a, a, um, a smoothies and juice bar where we, uh, we did, uh, we do also uh, uh, plant-based uh, yogurt uh, with uh, chia seeds. We do uh, acai bowl, all this kind of thing was quite new on the ship uh, two years ago. And it, it still have a lot of success. Then after we developed uh, last year a tremendous um, amount of recipe that we serve in all our venue. There are still things coming, I'm working on it, to really uh, be able to have some very nice plant-based dishes in any of our uh, alternative uh, restaurants. You mentioned that you will have options and do have options in all of the restaurants. Where does the, where does the inspiration come for your plant-based menu selections? Uh, actually, it's um, when I go on a ship, I already have a bunch of things that I've done at home. And, uh, and I do my really uh, second test, I will say, or my second run of recipe uh, when I'm on board. I'm so lucky to have a great uh, galleys with a lot of uh, chefs there that can help me. So my job is to, my job is to only develop and create recipes. Um, so my inspiration, I get it, I have to say, I'm so lucky that I live in, in the Loire Valley. Um, I, I spend actually half of my time in the Loire Valley and the other half, I have a house in Valencia, Spain, where uh, when it comes to product, I can tell you it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So I get all my inspiration uh, going to a local market. And uh, one thing uh, I really develop is to, I only buy what my eyes guide me. So if my eyes uh, go to a, a, a nice uh, red beet or a beautiful uh, um, beans, or I just buy whatever my eyes guide me, then I go home and I start to cook. And uh, I go to the market. Uh, when I'm in Spain, I go to market every day. When I'm in France, maybe three times a week. And, uh, and then when I, I start to cook at home, I just take my notes, take some pictures. Sometimes, if the first result is very nice, I already uh, post it on Facebook. Uh, very simple, few pictures, short video. And uh, I show them how uh, I made just a tart with a, a sauteed uh, a courgette, a little uh, uh, goat cheese, or, and uh, very simple stuff. 
and uh, and that, that that's how uh, I get uh, my my inspiration uh, mainly. Yeah. Uh, there's been some buzzwords uh, over the years in food, and some of the the newest words that maybe those of us that aren't in the food industry really fully understand. Uh, those of us have heard of vegan. Uh, and then you're talking obviously specifically about plant-based food. What really is the difference? Are they the same or are there some, some differences? That, that's a big question. And, um, <laughs> because vegan is a way of life. It means you don't wear uh, any leather. Uh, you uh, don't uh, use anything that comes from animals. Uh, so it's more than food. Um, for example, honey. The vegan doesn't eat honey. Um, plant-based, if you if you really on plant-based, I, I, I don't like to say diet, but if you eat plant-based food, uh, you for me it's like you are, you have access to uh, everything that come uh, from the, the 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 plants, of course. Um, but you can also, for example, me, I use honey. Um, but it's completely different. Plant-based diet is really a way of eating. And vegan is really a way of life. And um, I'm not vegan. Um, I'm actually much more like vegetarian type, even if I still work uh, on develop a lot of recipe on board uh, when we, we, we touch uh, fish, seafood, and, uh, and meat. But uh, in my private life, yeah, I'm, I'm vegetarian. But uh, vegan is, uh, I, I don't like to use this name. Uh, for me, it's too complicated, and uh, is, uh, is first of all, it's protected, and is not uh, is not really my uh, my way of uh, of thinking. Uh, but uh, when it comes to a uh, plant based, yeah, um, uh, pure plant based uh, food will will be uh, well received by vegan. Uh, and uh, but you know, vegan is only three percent of the population in the world that are vegan. And uh, which is not that much, and it doesn't grow. Uh, on, on my way of uh, of thinking is more to to guide the people uh, to to eat differently or to open some doors to uh, to really uh, have a lot of pleasure uh, pleasure on, uh, on with a simple recipe or to consume much more fruits and vegetables uh, with the, actually the same uh, result. I, I do a lot of uh, uh, when I receive uh, friends at home. Uh, I try to really cook 100% plant-based and sometimes I can tell you they don't even realize that they didn't add uh, meat or fish uh, at the end of the, of the meal. So that's, that's where I'm very happy when I, I manage to do that. You've, you've obviously mentioned that there is uh, some great flavors that come from plant-based menu options and so you don't really compromise in that area. But uh, there has to be, and I'm sure there are, health benefits to eating more plant-based foods. Can you share a little bit about the health benefits? Yeah, it's. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not a um, dietitian, uh, but uh, I, I really uh, talk with my own experience. Um, Fifteen years ago, I was doing a lot of ultramarathon, like hundred miles, and um, I realized uh, I, I start to look at uh, to talk to some people that were uh, eating only a plant-based food. And, uh, and they told me that, yeah, for recovering is the best. So I tried to really understand. I went to do some uh, cooking course, uh, try to, to really uh, get the maximum information. Uh, what I will say is that uh, uh, if you put a lot of acidity in your body, acidity comes from all animal products. So uh, I don't say that you have to stop to eat animal product, but you have to be able to balance. Um, and the, the balance between the acidity and the alkaline um, type of food that you will have on fruits and vegetables, we really balance so that uh, you will recover much more. Uh, if you run a lot, you will, uh, your, your tendon uh, will, uh, will not support the, that much acidity and sometimes breaks, or, or, but you recover much, much easier. And I don't know if you have seen a, a game changer on Netflix, uh, which is uh, a really a, a, a full uh, uh, movie about uh, all those big uh, uh, sportsmen uh, that switch to a plant-based uh, diet, and uh, and they all say that uh, it's crazy. And we we think sometimes we need to eat meat to to lift some weight, 
and the, the, the stronger the, the strongest man in the world is actually a vegan so um, there is a lot of things that uh, we uh, we we um, we have to, uh, to to think about when it comes to the way we eat but my goal um, and it, it's also much easier to digest and, uh, and it's also much better for the uh, environment but my goal is not to tell the people stop to eat meat it's just maybe uh, one or two meal during the week if you learn how to get some uh, uh, little tricks like uh, how to create uh, umami flavor uh, using only uh, uh, vegetable uh, you will realize that, uh, for example, ch shiitake mushroom, uh, red onions, uh, there is few ingredients like this that if you know how to use them, you, you will have the, the, this, um, you know, the, the, the umami flavor is, is what we, we, uh, we call when we, uh, when we, we relate it to uh, the, the addiction to the flavor of the, the, the grilled meat, for example that you are addicted to go back to this. Uh, some techniques we have in the plant-based food uh, creates the same effect and uh, you really uh, uh, want to go back. Uh, what we call on Oceania is the wa effect. Uh, for me, it's like w when a plate arrives and you start with it and you're like, wow, you see? And, and, uh, and, and for me, this is, I try that every single plate that goes out on the channel cruise is uh, creates the, the, the Y effect and, and he, 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 he gives us a little bit more challenge when it comes to plant-based food uh, so that, that's why we are using all those techniques to uh, really create this Y effect even if you eat uh, plant-based food. Well, thank you so much Franck. Let's bring back uh, James into the conversation here as, uh, as I have a few maybe additional questions. So if you are, are watching and want to interact with us, this would be a great time to type your question in the Q&A box below. But uh, before we get to some questions, James, it's probably on people's minds right now because it is on every news channel all day long. Uh, maybe just share with us Oceana Cruz's perspective as it relates to COVID-19. Sure. Well, I can tell you that, uh, as you can see, we're all working from home. Our office was uh, closed at the beginning of March. We all started working from home. And I don't think I've actually worked this much in my entire life, uh, even working from home. Uh, learning new technologies has been interesting for all of us and communicating on Zoom every day or on Teams. Uh, it's been uh, fairly interesting uh, just from a, uh, uh, an experience. Um, but I, I, think you, I think that uh, this has impacted the entire travel industry, not just the cruise industry uh, specifically. And what we're really focused on right now are probably three things that are on top of consumers' minds. And um, I'll, I'll start with the most, I mean, I'll end with the most important one, but number one is what is the deal? What is the offer? Um, we have a lot of our, our past guests who are asking us, you know, we know you guys are gonna come out with some great deals. Let me know what the deal is right now. Um, so we've been really working on that. And so over the last uh, couple of months, you'll notice on our website that we have new lower prices, uh, historical lower prices. We have our ultimate sale going on right now. Um, so you'll see across the board on every one of our sailings that um, it is, uh, it, it is a, our lowest price uh, right now. They also want to know that it, this is going to be the best price that they're going to get or the best offer. So we instituted a best price guarantee. So even if you book today, um, and three months later, we come out with a better offer. Um, you will have access to that offer as well. So uh, we wanna make sure that we encourage uh, guests not to wait, but to actually start booking now um, and getting that suite and stateroom um, that they actually want. Uh, number two is the cancellation policies. Uh, that's on top of people's minds. Seeing that we just went through this, um, guests were wondering, well, can I get my money back? What's going to happen? And I think this has been probably um, an interesting change for the industry as a whole. Uh, for Oceana Cruises, we just uh, extended our travel assurance program. And this, if you book a cruise right now, um, all the way till July 31st, um, if you book any cruise all, all the way up until 2022, um, you're going to have uh, within 48 hours of that cruise, you can actually cancel um, and get your money back. So. Um, this is offering some assurances to our travelers that um, whenever they do book with us, that if they book now a cruise um, between now and, and July 31st, 
depending, uh, it doesn't depend, it doesn't matter what uh, year, all the way up till 2022, uh, that within 12, 48 hours, they're going to be able to get their, their money back. But probably the one thing that has occupied a lot of my time um, and executives' times here at Oceana Cruises are the number one thing that are on people's mind is our health protocols. What are we doing uh, from a cruise uh, perspective? Unfortunately, the worst case scenario could you know, happen, which is we, there was a case of COVID on a cruise ship and they got all the media attention. Um, if you look today on just the stats, 99.9% um, .9 of all COVID cases have nothing to do with a cruise experience, um, but <laughs> it's probably 99.9% Point nine percent of the media attention that was got that was garnered uh, in February. So it's unfortunate for us, but it has allowed us to be innovative in, in, in that respect. Um, our CEO has said that um, I his gauge is that he wants to look his children in the eye and say that a cruise ship is safer than even being at home before he actually said puts anybody on our on our ship. So. Right now we're working with Scott Gottlieb, um, who was a former FDA um, chief, and he is advising um, our entire organization on just the health protocols. We've created a council that we'll be announcing very soon. He's working closely with them as well um, to come up with the most um, advanced health protocols in the industry. Uh, right now, the CDC is really the entity that is commanding everything right now. We're waiting for approval from them. Um, we're, we're waiting on direction from the CDC on just when we can actually uh, sell again. Uh, um, but for right now, and on Monday, we'll be launching uh, our initial health protocols on our website. And these are going to be an outline of what we're going to be building on over the next three to five months. And these health protocols are going to be everything from embarkation. Um, what are the protocols whenever you arrive to uh, the ship? Uh, a lot of our guests, you know, we always say that your know, embarkation starts at, you know, 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock. And unfortunately, guests arrive at nine. They all arrive at one time. Well, that's not going to be, um, be able to be the case anymore. We're going to have specific embarkation times uh, for our guests to arrive to the port so that we can create uh, a social distancing whenever you do arrive to the ports. But that's just you know, something that we're working through right now from testing before you get on board the ship, the health screenings, um, being um, the sanit sanitization and the certification of the ships. Upon each uh, cruise, the ship is going to be certified that it, it is uh, virus free. We're looking at safe safety protocols on, on board the ship, um, the fogging uh, on board the ship, when that happens, how often that happens, um, putting in new ventilation systems on board our ships, you know, uh, new hospital grade air filtration systems. Uh, we've always had at Oceana Cruises a non-touch uh, food service. So even at our buffets, you were never allowed to actually use the utensils to get your own food. That's going to be uh, the case throughout the ship. Uh, it's going to be ongoing. Um, it's always been the case for Oceana, but we're going to continue that as well. Uh, we're looking at innovative ways with social distancing, especially with our groups, when our groups come on board the ships. You know, how, how are we going to, uh, by nature, a cruise experience um, is social. So how do you socially distance on, on a cruise ship? We're working through um, all of these things, expanding our um, medical centers on board the ships uh, to make sure that we can accommodate um, our, uh, all our guests. And if there's ever an incident in our ship, which we have not had, um, that we can um, take care of that as well. But we're also working with our partners uh, throughout the world, um, our tour operators, because we want to make sure that even our tour operators have the highest standards that we have on board our ships. So when you're going into a, a coach, um, that they're going to limit the number of guests that are going to be allowed into the coach, so there's equal uh, space dis dis distancing then. Um, the attractions that we go to, the museums, we want to make sure that they are uh, adhering to the highest safety protocols uh, um, whenever our guests are visiting those um, destinations. So there's lots of work being done right now that may maybe not being seen by the public, uh, but there's extensive work just to make sure that the cruise experience um, is the safest uh, travel experience that you can have when traveling. Uh, thank you for sharing. That was very 
very informational. And I think that is something for our attendees to really uh, look out for is next week, uh, the, as you mentioned, the entire safety protocol. And, and luckily, uh, our partnership, James, you and myself and, and some other members of your team, you have outlined that uh, to our staff and to me. So we got a sneak peek of of what you guys are looking at. I know one of the items that you put in place is gonna be every ship will have a public safety officer on board where they are specifically designed 24 seven. They are there to make sure that all of these changes, all of the protocols are being followed. Uh, I know that the crew is going to be tested and having higher safety and higher health standards for the crew. So I know that's an important piece. You mentioned another piece that I think is, is important. One of our guests actually brought it up, and that is, uh, you know, throughout the voyage, you know, passengers are getting on and off ship with excursions. Uh, and so you mentioned it with your tour operators uh, to make sure that as they board and uh, and go to an excursion that the, the motor coach companies and things like that are adhering to these standards. And there could be, uh, not yet to be announced, I'm sure, some different levels of testing uh, throughout the voyage. It may not just be at the beginning of the voyage uh, for, for you guys. The entire cruise industry, and I can share that with the team here, uh, the, the viewers, it's not just Oceana working on this, right? You guys are working across the network of cruise lines uh, through a trade association called Cruise Lines International, CLIA, which is helping bring together these standards uh, because it's important that across the cruise platform uh, that all of these health standards are, are there for everybody. So I would encourage the listening audience to, to check out that document when it does come out. It, it will talk about additional staff and crew. You're beefing up the crew in the medical area uh, and making that a little bit more accessible as well. Let's, let's get off of, of that stuff because I'm still dreaming. I'm still excited. I want to eat. <laughs> uh, talked about specialty dining. Uh, Frank, uh, are there plant-based options in every restaurant on ship? So no, regardless of, of the restaurant that I choose to, is there a plant-based option in every restaurant? In progress. Uh, yeah. Um, today we have, uh, let's say, yeah, almost uh, uh, all the restaurants uh, beside Jack. Uh, Jack's restaurant is, uh, we, I'm working on it, but uh, I will say um, when we start uh, again, I have uh, everything ready and uh, little by little for the next six months, we'll have uh, plant-based dishes on every venue. That's this great. Is something that I really wanted and uh, started and it's very, very important so that uh, uh, it's not only for the, the, for the vegan uh, persons, but it's really, uh, it is, it's the entire philosophy that we want to install on Oceania to make sure that we have these um, this offers everywhere. Yeah. Uh, James, I know that some of our listeners are, are not necessarily familiar. They're not past guests of Oceana Cruises. Uh, I think some of them have sailed on, on more of what we term in the industry a premium line like a Princess or a Holland America or maybe a Norwegian cruise line, uh, which would be more in the contemporary space. On those cruise lines, if I want to go to the best restaurant on the ship, it's going to cost me a little bit more than what I paid for it. That's not included in the cruise fare. I'd have to believe, and I think I know the answer to this, a cruise line that says they have the finest cuisine at sea, you're not going to charge people if they want to go to one of the specialty restaurants, right? Uh, you're exactly right. I mean, whether it's uh, our, our steakhouse pillow grill or whether it's uh, Toscana, Red Ginger, or Jacques, there's no surcharges in any of our specialty dining um, restaurants. So, um. I think that's a, it's an important differentiator for our listening audience to, to, to understand. Uh, there is a minor surcharge if they want to participate in the Culinary Arts Center, I do, uh, I do believe, right? So that, but that's a nominal fee. Oh, there is, yes. Uh, if they do want to, it depends on the class they want to take and how extensive the class. Some classes are actually two days long. Um, and for those who are, are um, chefs at heart, um, we have some really intense classes that they can they can take, but uh, we also have some really great uh, crepe making classes, uh, which were perfect for me, even though I did burn my crepe, but it was still good no matter what. Um, but we have some we have classes all the way from beginners all the way to experts um, in our, our culinary center. 
when we were sailing off of the coast of Spain, and you'll like this, Frank, because we might have just left Valencia, as a matter of fact. Chef Kelly, who is uh, is one of the premier chefs there with Oceana Cruises and Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings in general. Uh, I was in the Culinary Arts Center with my wife, and she taught us how to cook paella, uh, and sangria was the beverage of choice. <laughs> it was it was fantastic. A I can definitely say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the questions uh, somebody mentioned, and I, I think we can just answer this, while there is no surcharge for uh, the, any of the restaurants on ship, and I would still say the main dining is, is a specialty restaurant in and of its own. I don't want to downgrade that restaurant by any means, just because it doesn't have, you know, the specialty restaurant name on it. Uh, can, if I wanted to eat in Red Ginger every night of the cruise, uh, could I do that? <laughs> You can certainly try. I mean, you can always call a concierge and try to get a uh, get a night, but uh, there really is a limit so that we can build, we can have everyone try each specialty restaurant. There's a two night limit um, on our specialty restaurants, depending on which uh, category of stateroom uh, that you're actually in, but we'd like for everyone to actually try each of um, the specialty dining restaurants and also some of the signature dishes. I mean, I've, uh, I don't know about you, but Red ginger is probably my favorite on board the ship. I love Asian food, but the miso uh, glazed sea bass, uh, it's been an interesting <clears throat> experience to be there with someone who's never had it before. Um, I was hosting a group of travel advisors and uh, this, the look on their faces whenever they tried it, was like, this is the best thing I have ever eaten in my entire life. So uh, it's very, it's um, very proud to, that what, what our chefs are able to accomplish in all of the restaurants from you know French cuisine to um, even on board one of our ships on Serena, there is a fusion restaurant that is a steakhouse Italian grill. Um, so you can have Italian favorites or you can have your steakhouse favorites, but there's also some fusion options uh, that you can have in, in Tuscan steak as well. It's just um, a great experience. Uh, you you absolutely nailed my favorite menu item on land or sea, and that is the miso <laughs> sea bass there in red ginger. But I, I would be remiss if I didn't say you got to try the French onion soup in jocks, and you're yeah. missing out if you go to the Polo Grill and not have one of the chops uh, there in Polo <laughs> Grill. You just cannot go wrong uh, with any of the, the restaurants. Um, I do have, uh, let's just maybe one of the the audience members did ask this, and I would be remiss to not bring this up. Uh, somebody said, while food's wonderful, tell me a little bit about the shore excursion experience. So maybe you could just give us a little uh, overview about your shore excursion program. Sure. Um, I, I, I alluded to it in the presentation, but uh, we really try to create these immersive experiences wherever we go. Um, I, like I said, our guests are experienced travelers. They've been to many of these locations several times. So they really ask us to create some unique experience. We have some go local tours where you're able to, and I still haven't figured out who's done this just yet, but I'd like to interview them, but you can learn sheep herding uh, when you're in Spain. So uh, you can go with a, um, a herder, a sheep herder, and, and just learn the techniques that they learn. So you spend the day with, with this family uh, of sheep herders, but there's also some very unique go local tours that we have that you are immersed with a local from that particular region. And it could just be viewing the city from their, their perspective, um, a, a special tour just with them. So how they actually see the locals tour and see some of the sites in these particular areas. But we have a wide variety of shore excursions. We do have the city tours for those uh, guests who want quick view of a particular area. They just want to get in and get out. Uh, but we do have the immersive specialty um, uh, shore excursions, whether they be uh, health and wellness tours, like I had mentioned, uh, whether they be culinary based or whether they be very immersive go local tours. We have something just uh, just about for everyone on board the ship. You definitely do. And uh, as we're getting towards the end of our time here, I do want to make sure that our listening audience is aware uh, we have a special offer. So for those of you that uh, we have inspired you to a point of booking your next vacation on an Oceana cruise vessel, which if you are not going to, you clearly weren't listening uh, or looking at those slides because my mouth is salivating. But for every booking that is made from May 27th 
through June 10th, exclusively with Bon Voyage Travel, we're going to be offering with in partnership with Oceana Cruises a $200 shipboard credit. Uh, and that goes for every booking that is a new booking in a veranda category and above and why you would want to sail on anything less than a veranda, that's another story. Uh, but we're excited to have that offer. So call your Bon Voyage Travel Advisor today. You have until June 10th to get that deposited. Uh, and if you don't have a Bon Voyage Travel Advisor, go back to our website, www.bvtravel.com. Travel.com. You can peruse all of our advisors and find someone that matches what you're looking for. That's what we love to do is match people so that we can match experiences. Uh, otherwise, you can call our main number 520-797-1110 and we'll connect you with one of our experts as I have to say this, James, and, and I think you will love what I'm going to say. You are our number one cruise line. We don't sell anybody more than we do Oceana Cruises and we love your our partnership. We love having you on today. This was a highlight, uh, not only for me, but I'm sure for our attendees. Franck, you get the award, my friend, for staying up the latest uh, in the Loire <laughs> in France. Thank you for joining us, Chef. Thank you, thank you very much. Really enjoy it and uh, it's always nice to share a food story. Uh, we, we love sharing uh, memories together. This will be a great memory. James, I look forward to seeing you soon. And thanks to all of our attendees. If you're interested in participating in the BBT, the Bon Voyage Travel weekly webinar series, go back to our website. We've got a full slate of people lined up in the month of June. If you're interested in going to Alaska, we have an Alaska expert. James is ready to go. His background tells you that and much more. So check the weekly webinar series. Other than that, be safe and dream big.